welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you a quick, easy, should be easy, DIY project. I'm going to be transforming a really inexpensive bookcase. So bookcases like these, you can get at Lowe's, you can get them at Target, Walmart, you can also find them at Ikea. The Billy bookcase is um, probably the most similar, the one that y'all are probably most familiar with. And I'm gonna show you guys a quick little flip to just kind of spice it up a little bit and turn it from just like a basic bookcase into something a little bit more fancy. Hopefully using a lot of items that I already have. And then I just gotta run to Lowe's to grab like one panel board. And um, I have trim, I have trim boards I believe. I have plenty I think to do. There's one right there. I, I probably just need a few more pieces of trim. But other than that, um, it should be a very inexpensive flip to really transform the bookcase. So that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> While I was at Lowe's grabbing a few materials, I wanted to flash back in time a little bit to the day that my husband and I assembled this bookcase. So this is really easy to put together. Um, it only, you can do it by yourself, but it always helps to have an extra helping hand. So he helped me out with that. Um, but something we decided to do that was a little different was instead of putting the, the panel that goes on the back side instead of putting the white side facing forward, we actually flipped it to the brown side. Um, that way it had this wood look, like without having to buy wood and put the panel on the back. So it was a great inexpensive way to just kind of amplify the bookshelf in my opinion. And I really like it. I like it much better than the white panel. Um, and once it's painted later on in the video, you, trust me, it's gonna look so good. Okay, we were totally joking right there, by the way. Um, but basically what happened was when he was nailing in the backing, he missed a few spots, so it poked through and messed up the shelves, but no big deal, no one's gonna see it but us. Um, but that's what the bookshelf looks looked like once it was all assembled. We took it outside because I'm gonna go ahead and start modifying it. So I took some measurements to cut a two by four to make a base that the bookshelf will sit on top of. Because later on I will be also adding legs to it and I needed something that the legs could screw into that would be nice and sturdy. Because the bookshelf itself is really not all that strong. It's made out of particle board and it's a little wobbly. So adding the base is also gonna kind of reinforce the entire bookshelf as well. So that's what I'm gonna work on here, just making a few cuts and then I'll show you guys me assembling the little base. It's very simple. I didn't do anything extravagant. I just basically put in a few screws to make a box that the bookshelf will sit on top of. Once I got all the two by four pieces cut, I did lay out the box just to make sure the measurements were correct. Once I got it all ready, I went ahead and attached all the boards together using, I think I used like two inch wood screws. I just had some on hand and that's just what I used. Um, so once I get it assembled, at that point I realized, oh crap, the bookshelf has like a lip on it. So there's a gap and Luckily, I had an extra shelf piece from the bookcase, so I actually just laid that piece of shelf on top of the base, and it worked out perfectly. Everything fit like a glove, so I wanted to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about right here. So here's where I added that shelf to the base that I created. Um, and then whenever I lift the bookshelf up onto this base, you'll see that gap in between, um, like on the bottom, that needed to be filled. So. Once I lift the bookshelf up and I get it centered over the base, the bookshelf will sit perfectly on the wood and then that gap that was there will be filled with that extra shelf. So see right here what I'm talking about? Um, so it just worked out perfect. Like I said, all that will be covered with trim, so don't worry about the way that it looks right now. All right, so at this point, I removed the shelf off the base again so I could work on adding the brackets for the legs. So I picked this little kit up from Lowe's and I wanna say it was like $8 or something like that. Um, and I'm attaching these to the corners of the two by four. The legs that I'm gonna use, I actually saved from an old nightstand that I had and I have wanted to use them on something for so long, but nothing really just like fit the look except for this bookshelf in the vision that I had for it. So I'm attaching these little brackets and then I will um, screw in the 
legs that I'm going to use and don't mind the way they look at first because they are whitewashed from back when I whitewashed my nightstands, but I will be painting them all at the very end. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my bookshelf onto the base. And this part was probably kind of silly on my end. I should have just laid the bookshelf down and attached it while it was laying down. But no, not me. I'm like, I'm going to lift this bookshelf and put it on top all by myself. <laughs> so I get the bookshelf in place. And this is when you can really see how everything kind of fits like a glove. Um, and once I knew this was perfect, I actually had my husband come out and help me cut the arch for the top. Um, so using a jigsaw is not my favorite. I don't like this thing. I, I feel like I've had a few moments, a little, little sketchy moments where I about got myself and I just, I don't know, there's just certain tools that I'm still a little nervous about and that's okay. I'll get there. But I did have him help me with this, um, cutting the arch. So I did the best I could and I taped off the best arch I could basically draw. Um, I tried all different types of hacks on how to draw a perfect arch and every time I did it, it kept messing up. So I finally just kind of eyeballed it. I marked the center for the peak of the arch and as long as the center part was good, I knew that later on when I added all the trim that I planned on adding, it would cover any of those imperfections. So once he gets this cut, we did lay the bookshelf down on its backside so that way I could start attaching the panel board and all the trim a lot easier than when it was up really tall. So I'm adding the panel board using my 18 gauge brad nailer and just little tiny nails to attach that and then I'm going to start cutting some trim that I got from Lowe's. Very inexpensive trim. You can find these um, for like I would say they range between three to ten dollars for like an eight foot piece of trim and I grabbed just a few and I'm going to start adding these. I did use my miter, she my miter shears to cut the trim just because it's a lot easier than having to like constantly change the angle on the saw um, and these are a must-have. If you ever do trim work in your house, like small trim work, I highly recommend getting you some of these. They're awesome. Now it's time to attach the arch trim. So I use those miter shears and I cut the trim to fit. Um, and this was a little challenging because it is a little wobbly and hard to work with when you're by yourself, but I did just take the brad nailer and popped a few nails on each side into the thicker trim. So on each side of the bookcase, but then at the top where the thin panel board is, it was too thin to add a nail there. So I just took some liquid nails and I'm actually gonna glue this trim in place. So I put some liquid nails along um, the little gaps right there and then I'm gonna tape it so that way it will dry and stick and it worked out great. So 
I found some old trim in my shed, so I'm just cutting these to fit right here to cover up the base. So it'll go like that, and then like that here on both sides. So that's what I'm working on now. After adding all of the trim along the bottom, I ended up having to call it a day because we had a severe storm come through and I was working on my project outside, which was definitely a no-go and it was lightning super bad. And not only that, but it was super hot. So I let it, I let all the liquid nails dry and then I had my husband help me carry it inside to finish it up the next day. So I added some caulk around where the arch was just to fill any of the holes that were there. And then I'm going to be taking some of this spackling and filling the holes along the edge of the bookshelf because I already knew where I wanted all my shelving to go. If you plan on moving your shelves around, definitely don't fill in your holes, but if you have a set spot, then I would highly recommend doing this. It just gives it like a little bit more of a finished look. So I'm going to work on it, filling all the holes and caulking any of the seams that need to be filled. After filling all the seams and all the holes, I let everything dry and then I asked on Instagram if y'all wanted to see me paint something green or black and most of you voted for black so I went with black and I'm so happy I did. Um, I think one of the reasons I was trying to steer away from the black for a moment to see if y'all would vote for green was because I recently did a makeover in my living room and I built built-ins on either side of my fireplace and they are black with a wood background. So I think that's why I ended up kind of mimicking that look with this bookshelf because I love it so much. So that's why I really wanted the brown backing. And once it starts getting all painted, you will see how that brown backing really just pops. And I like the way that looks because it also gives your decor a chance to shine <laughs> because if you have a full black bookshelf you're not going to see your decor like you would with a lighter background. So I like to have the lighter background with the darker overall look. I like, I like both moody and light at the same time, so maybe that's why I keep doing this same style. But anyway, I took some paper that the kids had, just like scrap pieces of paper that they were drawing on that they didn't finish, and I used that to help protect the backing, and I'm gonna work on um, two coats of black paint on the entire shelf. After getting two coats of black paint on the bookshelf, I pulled it into my office and I'm just going to style it using some items that I already had on hand. Some books, some vases, and some candlesticks that I got from a thrift store recently. And I love the way it turned out. But here's just a reminder on how the bookshelf looked before I got started. And this is what she looks like now.
right, y'all, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out and watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing me flip this really basic bookcase on a tight budget. I think it turned out pretty good, but I would love to hear what you think in the comments below. Um, once again, I appreciate you being here. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, y'all.